And then the second half in June of this chopped them up. They made 2012. Welcome to the Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM. Man, what a show. We had a great night of high school football. We're going to talk to Ukaipa head coach Justin Price. He's going to call in in about 10 minutes. As the Thunderbirds went to quadruple overtime, got to win on the road. Stole a victory. Stole. It was awesome. Like a thief in the night, you can ask him that. You can ask him that. But it was 61-60, quadruple I think, overtime. I think he was running off the field with the shh. Yeah, let's get out of here, guys. But it was a nice win by the T-Birds. Uh, so we're going to talk to Coach Price a little bit. In the second segment, we got the legendary head coach of IE football, the godfather, Dick Bruick, in the house. Just inducted into the CIF Southern Section Hall of Fame this week. So we're going to talk to Coach Bruick about the Hall of Fame. And really just whatever we want to ask him, we're going to reflect about his career, uh, the guys he knows, maybe some big games. I mean, it's fair game. we got him here in the studio. Really, I think all he wants to talk about is grandson playing football on the stage. Yeah, he's got the yeah, Bobcats. Uh, he's, yeah, exactly, he's so, all over that. I just want to hear the guy's coaching tree. It's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. legendary. Oh, it is. It's probably ridiculous, yeah. right? Every you could probably pinpoint every single school and be like, yeah, there's you know some connection to uh, the legendary coach Brooks. One is a progeny who's kicking the heck out of the CBL on a regular basis. That is true. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. yeah and his daughter is the AD at Rupa Hills, and they had a big win last night. So, so we're gonna talk to Coach Brooks coming up in the second segment, and finally in the third segment, we're gonna talk a little cross country, guys. You guys both look like you're runners. Oh, oh, man, big runner. <laughs> Real big, big runner. runner. Real big runner. Last night, I ran, I ran to the yeah, trash can. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. You big ran to uh, the, the fast food place down the street. I ran to Baker's. Yeah, so. <laughs> so we're going to talk cross country. Actually, Cal Baptist University going to Hawaii as the men are going for six straight Pac West titles, the women going for three straight Pac West titles. So the conference meet just happens to be in Hawaii. I know. Rough wow. gig, right? So. I, I've noticed that a lot of the matches and things they do. They play golf all over the United States, and the women's team is gone for, like, days at a time, it seems. Yeah. Does, does Cal Baptist lose at anything? They're winning all, they're winning all across the board. Yeah, they're good at everything. Like, because we bring them on frequently, and I'm like, who do we pick this week? Everybody's winning. Everyone's challenging for conference titles. Actually, the soccer teams are in Hawaii right now. They're, like, there for two weeks. When you go, you play, like, the four schools on the islands, and you just hang out in Hawaii for a couple weeks. So, you so when they're recruiting you, is it like when you go to a, like, a, 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 what is it, a place where you get the, uh, Someone does tour director place, you know, when yeah. they come in, they go, oh, and on Tuesday, you're yeah. <laughs> being caught upon. Yeah. <laughs> Hula lessons at 11 a.m. Yeah. Awesome. We're going to go to a We're going to play lunch. three sets of volleyball, and then after, we're going to have a luau. <laughs> so we'll talk CBU Cross Country. That'll be fun. That's coming up in the third segment. It's all brought to you by Adrenaline Athletic Training in Corona, AdrenalineAthletic.com is the website. Check out their training programs, get you in the best shape of your life so you can win that starting job or get a scholarship. Spoiled, quick quality oil change right here in Riverside. I drove, I'm not even kidding you, probably between five and 700 miles this week. I was all over the place and spoiled keeps me on the road. Long, I mean, I was doing loops around Southern California. It was ridiculous, but I was like, you know what? It's all good. Bill Navigato and spoiled. They hook it all up. I don't have to worry. It's all good. So I was just in there. They even serviced my transmission at 80,000 yeah. miles. Yeah. yeah. Well, wiper blades. I mean, they're like, what do you need? Did you see on social media? They actually, uh, uh, one of the they built a commercial. Did a commercial inside their place. It's such a good looking place too. It's clean. Yeah. It's really nice. So it's I mean, sharp. It, it, I mean, it's yeah. like a set. It looks like a movie set, really. Honestly, it does. when you pick some oil, an oil change place, I'm thinking of like, of course, the oil stains, like kitty litter on the ground where they try to clean up. Yeah. Like it's just a nasty. An old place. guy leaning a chair against yeah. the wall. Is yeah, hat down yeah exactly. But not spoiled, man. That place is on. First rate. Yeah, right. They, I mean, they shot a TV commercial there, so if that says anything, nice. how cool they are. Uh, Remax Advantage, 909 307 5665, because nobody sells more real estate. Nobody than Remax Advantage. Ken's Sporting Goods, celebrating 40 years right here in the Inland Empire. Embroidery, team sales, equipment. Shoes. Uh, they even have local teams. So if you want to go find, I don't know, let's say a Corona High School, you know, hat or a Panther shirt or whatever, go in there. They got local gear as well. So Kins Sporting Goods, and finally Fandom House Studio. We appreciate their support. You can go to FandomHouse.com, find out uh, more about what they do. But we're excited about the sports edit, and you can book your Fandom House session right now for your senior or junior photos you want to take. Do it in their uniforms. Make it look. 
really sharp, send it out for Christmas, maybe send it out to colleges as a recruiting tool. Wink, wink, all you parents out there and coaches. So fandomhouse.com and uh, call and get a, a free quote there um, and, uh, or visit their website for more information. All right, we've got a lot of high school football to get to because we got Coach Brew coming up in the second segment, and we don't want to keep him waiting around. He's got that big Montana State football game coming up to watch uh, Blake Braun out there. So let's talk about some of the games from last night, guys, uh, because Coach Price will be calling in about five minutes here to talk about Ukaipa's big win against Cajon. Once again, that was 61-16 quadruple overtime. Jeff, real quick, Heritage over Elsinore. 48-6, the final score in that one, as the Patriots just keep rolling here. Yeah, I, I, I was impressed with them from their scrimmage versus uh, Marietta Valley and Norco, uh, but they have really, in the last you know, six weeks, have shown that they are the, really the, the, the cream of the crop in that league. Uh, it's going to be a great shootout to see them go against Paloma. But man, That's the last week of the season, yes, isn't it? Yes, that is the last last week of the season, for, probably for the league championship. And Paloma won 70 zip against Lakeside, and all, all 70 of those? In the first half. First half. Yeah, which is you know, it's incredible. How do you get that many possessions? In one half. It's amazing. It's an amazing thing. So no defense. <laughs> so that's the Minifee Bowl. It, oh. it should it should stack up where they're both going to be nine and zero. League title on the line. Huge rivalry game. I mean, you couldn't draw up a better scenario. If assuming they both win their next couple games to set that up. Yeah, and I do. Say, I will say this: Heritage has the best offensive line in the county. In the whole area, there's nobody that has an offensive line like them. I, you can, I would say even better than Centennial because Centennial wow. has skilled guys, but that offensive line is incredible. You had some inf inside information. Can we share that or not really? You, about about Heritage and maybe who they might want to schedule. Is that confidential? That was that was told to me before the game. I don't think it would be. I don't think there's anything we can do. Cause I, see, see now Jeff I have part, no idea what you're talking yeah, about. Okay, here's, here's, the deal. No. here's the deal. Because Jeff's now part of the Inland Sports Show, he's got sources now. So not just I, you and I, I, had, I Jeff had, has sources. I had, I had a, a coach, a good friend of mine on the sidelines, come up to me and say, hold hey. On. Wait, hold on. You might want to take notes of this. They got a phone call from, from another team in our area that is rated a little higher than them. Centennial has them for a game, huh? Yes. I think I would love to see it. Would you not want to see that game? I would, man. I would be there. Where could we? Where could you hold that game? Well, it's not going to happen this year, so we'll, no, we have a whole year to oh, yeah. think about it, Jeff. How, but how cool? Hey, wait that a minute. Be? That's still just a rumor, you know. We got to go to the source first to find out. Is know? it a good source? It's a, it's a real good source. Jeff has good sources. It's a good source. Oh no, no, that's what they say. It's a good source. Okay, even if it's not, it's good fodder for next year. <laughs> We have a whole year yeah, to talk about. But how cool would that be? Let's break it down. Five reasons why Heritage is going to play Centennial. Yeah, that well, that's a that would be a fantastic matchup. Maybe it's almost as good as Yukaipa and Cajon oh. last night. We're going to go right now to the Fandom House Studio Celebrity Hotline. He coached his butt off last night. Came away with a one point win in quadruple overtime. It's Yukaipa head coach Justin Price here on the Inland Sports Show. Coach Price. Uh, can you walk me through maybe some of the emotions that you guys go through when you have a game of that caliber and that crazy and that long? Coach, uh, just so I understand it, so in quadruple overtime, Cajon scored a touchdown, went for the two-point conversion. You guys stopped them, got the ball back, scored, and the extra point was the difference. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, we had a big, I don't know, I'm sure you know this, but Cajon did not take the PAT. Correct, they yeah. Went the, they went for two the entire night, so our philosophy in the overtime was we were going to go for two every time. Uh, just until we got to a situation where if we did get a stop against, you know, when they were offensive, on the offensive side first, that we were going to kick a PAT to win. Um, you know, and I will tell you, Evan Meter, our kicker, missed a PAT earlier in the game after our first touchdown. 
you know, and I had the confidence to go back to him, and, uh, you know, he did a great job, you know, winning the football game for us. Well, Coach, we've seen a bunch of ties this season. A bunch of teams have been uh, finishing even after regulation. And, and the way we understand it is the coaches get to decide before kickoff if they would like to play overtime. Do you always elect to play overtime? Yeah, every week. You know the old saying, you don't want to kiss the sister, so no. <laughs> <laughs> You are absolutely right. We've got Justin Price here, the head coach at uh, Ukaipa High School. The T-Birds winning 61-60 in quadruple overtime last night. Um, in terms of the big picture, by defeating Cajon, you guys put yourself in, in still pretty good position to finish in the top half of a, a very competitive Citrus Belt League. So um, I know you, we've talked about this in the past that when you started Citrus Belt League play, I think you had Rev and then uh, what Redlands in there and Carter and Cajon. So you're going to know in the first four games of league play where this team stood. And you're 3-1 and one through the first four games of league play, so you've got to feel, feel pretty good about that. Yeah, and we, we knew coming into the year that we called it the gauntlet, the gauntlet of four games. And to be honest with you, um, after watching Citrus Valley the last uh, few weeks, you know, I, I almost feel like they, you could, might as well add a fifth game to the gauntlet because they look uh, very well coached, explosive on offense, and they're going to definitely give us a test next week at home. Hey, Coach, why do you call Nathan Martinez Zilla? What's, what's the, the secret behind that nickname? Well, I didn't come up with it. I, apparently, it's his nickname from when he was a kid. Uh, because if you don't know Zilla at all, you know, he's not a very big kid, so he's got to have a chip on his shoulder all the time. But I guess apparently kind of named him after Godzilla because he has a giant head and he used to just terrorize the house. <laughs> That's a great story. <laughs> This is Justin Price here from Ukaipa High School talking about the T-Birds' big win against Cajon last night. Um, Coach, we had a camera guy there, and in the fourth quarter, it was still a low-scoring game. It was 6-6 six to six at halftime. Um, what happened? Like, where did all the touchdowns come from? I thought we had a defensive battle on our hands. Well, you know, we talked before the season started, and you came to our practice after being at Cajon, you told me that they had the biggest offensive line yeah. that you had seen in a long time, and that you were correct. They were gigantic. And eventually what happened is we got worn down on defense and so did they. I mean, honestly, in the overtimes, it was, I knew it was going to come down to who could get a stop on a two-point conversion. Um, you know, it, like you said, how do you go from 6-6 six, six at halftime to 61-60 to 60 final four? <laughs> I mean, it, it was just craziness. It, the, the whole game was just, I don't even know how to explain. I don't think words can explain the, especially for our program, um, you know, the people who have played the home at the home know that they have a great home field advantage there, and they always call it play very well at home. Did you have a lot of people uh, blowing up your cell phone last night, or maybe even this morning, saying, "Wow, coach! Uh, you know, I just I, I saw the game in the newspaper, or I just saw, I heard what the final score was. Amazing! I, you know, do you get a lot of that? Oh, tons of it. I mean, now with social media, between Twitter and text messaging and Instagram, and it's it was blowing up until three or four in the morning. To be honest with you, it's, it's just crazy nowadays how you can, you know, people can celebrate your success on, on social media, and, and I'm, you know, I think it's great. I think the kids really get into that stuff, and I will say this: it's the thing that I'm most proud of with this group is if you look at, we beat San G in the final minutes of the game, we beat Redlands in the final minutes of the game for us to come back last night. You know, our motto this year has been finished, and so far our kids have, have demonstrated that. You know. The motto is reality, man. We're going to finish games. Definitely a resilient group. A 61-60 victory against Cajon in four overtimes last night. Ukaipa head coach Justin Price here on the Inland Sports Show. Coach, we appreciate the time. And once again, congratulations on that big win against the Cowboys. Thanks, Seth. Thanks for having me on. No problem. That's Coach Price from Ukaipa High School here on the Inland Sports Show. Have a good one, Coach. And uh, when we come back here on the Inland Sports Show, we'll talk more high school football. We've got the legend, Dick Bruick, in the house. I don't even know where to start with this guy because he's there's so many layers to him. There's so many things you could ask, but we, we got about a good 15 minutes with Coach Bruick. we got to get him back out to his home so he can watch Blake Braun play at Montana State. And Plus, I, they're having like a huge barbecue, too, so we don't want to hold him up. He's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, he, he definitely don't want to hold him up. So we're going to talk to head coach... Dick Bruick, the legend here in the Inland Empire, when we come back on the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM. I think 
God, first of all. I, I thank the great people that I've got around me that uh, help support me, the people that work for me. As I started, if it wasn't for the people around me, uh, we probably wouldn't be here right now, but I've got a great staff. I've got great people that do stuff for us outside the store, and uh, we've been very, very fortunate. Our service is impeccable, and we just keep trying to get better every year. We can do online stuff for your teams, as well as, like I said, the screen printing, the embroidery. We also have three women that do extra sewing for us, uh, like tackle tool on uniforms, or uh, the bling or rhinestones for, for different shirts for the ladies. That's why we have uh, certain racks just just for certain schools, and and the uh, the fun the fun about that is that it turns into other schools that may come in here that uh, aren't as close that we can do stuff for them as well. We've had very very good customers throughout the years, and it's just been it's just been a blast. excited about offering still and motion photography, motion graphics, which is like television style uh, graphics, um, and sports edits, which we're really excited about because we get to incorporate not only photography, but graphics which, and effects, which is, uh, I'd say, our strength. You know, something that screams action, athletic, information, all in one unit, and easily to share with friends, family, coaches. Get yourself and welcome back to the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports Radio 1350 AM. It's been a good show so far. Great I wish show. we had more time to talk high school football. We had a lot of scores trickling in last night. And I thought, man, all the blowouts. Like, we didn't have any close games. And, of course, we saw that Ukaipa Cajon score come in. I had, to, I had to triple check that one. I'm like, is that right? Yeah. So, just it, it just seemed not par for what was going on last it night. It was it kind of an odd night, too, because, like, Centennial turned the ball over four times and still managed to score you know, umpteen touchdowns to still win the game. And they had tons of turnovers. I heard they played really sloppy, and they still... And that, was, that was a 21-0 game at halftime. Yeah, yeah. So Santiago did, you know, did a pretty good job. I think they turned it over four times in the first half. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, that halftime conversation with head coach Matt Logan... I would imagine was that was lively. A little interesting. Lively. <clears throat> so, anyways, we're brought to you by Adrenaline Athletic Training, spoiled quick-quality oil change, Remax Advantage, Ken Sporting Goods, and Fandom House Studio. We want to remind everyone that the second annual... Austin Gorel Memorial Baseball Classic is coming up. It's November 19th through the 21st. Help us celebrate the life of Austin Gorel. There's a lot of local high school baseball teams that are going to be playing in this three-day tournament. Last year, they were able to give away $6,000 worth um, of scholarship money. I know they have a program. You can advertise if you're a local business owner or a local company uh, if you want to get in the program. It's, it's, a, it's a really cool deal. We're happy to be a part of it as well. So once again, um, if you're looking for more information on the tournament, you can hit us up, and we'll make sure we get that to you. So that's November 19th through the 21st. All right, so we've got um, <clears throat> the legendary head coach, Dick Bruick, here in the studio. And like we said, there's so much we could talk to him about. But first off, we want to wish him congratulations on being inducted into the CIF Southern Section Hall of Fame. And Zeke, you and I had a conversation before we asked Coach about it. We were like, finally, right? What took so long? <laughs> That's way long overdue. I mean, the man had a great career, and he's obviously been very happy in retirement, yes. doing all the great things that he's doing now, but it's been way too long, this thing coming. And there's a few others that are in there from the Inland area that I think also, you know, a guy like Bob Burt and, you know, others. Uh, Bill, Bill York. York. Yeah. I mean, those are, those are, they should be coming. And I'm sure that there's a reason why it didn't happen, but I'm glad that they finally came to their census coach and actually did something to honor you for the great career that you had as a football coach and softball coach, for that matter. That's true. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. But, uh, you know, you have to be retired. That's kind of one of their things. And, uh, they also, I think you got to be nominated, and uh, so a lot of people said, uh, as it happened, how come you weren't in before? And I said, well, I probably I wasn't nominated, and people didn't know. So uh, this this time, uh, Ed Kirby took the ball, the, the bull by the horns and nominated me and said, hey, uh, we think he should be in there. And then 
from there it moved on, you know. And so uh, here it is. And yes, uh, it was for softball as well. We had some really good softball teams, you know. I, I don't know what how many wins, but there was over 400 wins in softball and umpteen league championships. But we never went very far in the playoffs. We just didn't have the pitching to compete with the people. And now uh, the Inland Empire can compete with everybody in softball. Back in the day, we couldn't compete with them in softball. Yeah, it's a hot thing. Are you like, were you like a closet softball fan? I mean, what, what, what drew you to softball? I mean, football, I understand. You played the game, right? I tried. <laughs> As we all did. But, but I mean, softball, I mean... Uh, my daughter, uh, Kristen, it was a tremendous athlete, and uh, she's probably... Every bit as good a softball player as she was a basketball player. I mean, she still holds a couple records up there at LMU, but uh, she, people don't know she was all state in both sports for two years, junior and senior year. And, and for a long time, she held the, the school record for batting average at Fontana High School. It's always been broken since then. They've had some really good players, you know. I, uh, I'm not sure which one broke it, but uh, as I left Fohai, she was still the leader, you know, and then Coach Southworth took over, and they had some really good teams. But, yeah, that got me into softball. And actually, it was my wife. My wife started coaching when Chris was about 10. She started coaching a softball team, and all of a sudden I was called in to help a little bit, and I got the fever. And then I, when the job opened at 1980, I started at uh, Fontana High School, 1980 in softball, man, a long time ago. And... Uh, you know, I said a lot of times, if I, if I was going to quit, I'd give up football first before I'd give up softball. Wow. Uh, that's what I said. You know, I really enjoyed it, yes. Hey, what, what, why'd you get into coaching? I mean, what, you said you, you kind of okay. you were being self-deprecating as a player. You, you say you weren't very, very good. good. I'm sure you were fine. <laughs> I wasn't very good. I wasn't very you good. You understood and the game, couldn't play I, it? Yeah, I, probably, I probably, was, probably was a lot better at telling guys what to do than to do it myself. <laughs> but uh, I was in the 10th grade. I was in a Catholic school, and I had there was a brother there that uh, really, really gave me a real love for coaching. And uh, from the time I was 10th grade, I wanted to be a, a coach. I wanted to be a teacher and a coach. And obviously football was my first love. And, uh, and uh, then uh, I was very lucky, so I, I went to Cal State LA and wasn't really good enough and moved on and started coaching while I was in college. And uh, while some guys were playing and doing all that, I got in with some really, really good coaches. I, I worked with some really good coaches and uh, was fortunate enough then as I graduated to immediately get a teaching and coaching job at St. Paul. And it's kind of funny because Bob Bird had just left St. Paul and uh, took a job at Potter Nostra as the head coach. And I, I became kind of, I took his place in the coaching and uh, the teaching ranks there at uh, St. Paul High School. So uh, I go way back with Bob Burt. So, I mean, it's, in, in, you know, and we talked about it the other day. And then Roger Blake was there. And, you know, Roger Blake is a Inland Empire guy, and he's yeah. the state commissioner. And former his, Elsner basketball yeah, coach. Yeah, and AD and San Bernardino Valley, his old man was the man up there yeah. at basketball. And, uh, well, Roger and myself and a few other guys, we formed a group from Azusa Pacific. They had some clusters, they called it, and we had a coaches cluster that we all got our master's degree together. We, um, I kind of organized it, and Jim Evans kind of provided the place. We used Jim Evans' room in, uh, at Redlands High School. And so we used his room, and uh, I was the organizer, and we had, we had I mean, you, the, the who's who. Jim Taylor was in the class. I mean, we could go on and on through the, the coaches in the Inland Empire. They were all in that class. We got our masters together. So we've kind of all kind of had that connection that we became friends through that because we suffered together. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's some of Coach Brewick's stats. 292 career football wins. Um, four CIF Southern Section titles, 20 league titles, 400 wins, over 400 wins as a softball coach as well. And, Coach, I always think that's an interesting dynamic, coaching football players and that kind of culture and going to a softball team. I mean, did you have to change your approach, the way maybe you handled the girls as opposed to the boys? Well, you know, I used to tell the girls that uh, once you cross the line, you're an athlete, I'm going to treat you as an athlete. When you come back to the dugout and when you're not, you know, when we're not there, I'm going to treat you as a lady, you know. And it's kind of, that was kind of the approach. And, uh, you know, you know, you can't pat them on the butt, but you could still you could still yell at them. You could yeah. still, you, could, you know. But uh, you know, so that you know, it, it was it was probably a, a different change of approach, but it was a good distraction for me. And I was very fortunate, you know, because I had 
Skip Fazio and John McKinney that ran the weight room at Full High. And I didn't have to worry about what was going on in the weight room because they were doing it. And when I got, when I got up to Kaiser, we, I still had John, but then we had different guys and different guys, and eventually it was Phil Zelaya that, that ran the weight room. So I could sneak out of the weight room. I was in there, but I wasn't in there. You know, uh, I made my presence known, but I didn't have to be in there for every minute of the weightlifting sessions because we had, we had such good coaches. I mean, and, you know, Hall of Fame is not about me. It's about all the kids that played and all the coaches that worked with me and, and my wife and my family and all the sacrifices that they made. Kathy made a lot of them. And, and the assistant coaches' wives and families made a lot of sacrifices. And that's, uh, that's, that's how you get successful. It's not about me, uh, you know. I don't, I don't like to think that I did anything. It was all a we. Everything was a we, and that's kind of where we were at. And that's, I would guess, why you've been so successful. It's because it doesn't end up being about you. It's about you and a community of people taking care of whatever it is. Pep and I feel the same way about the Inland Sports, where we have you know lots of people that Surround come in and out, but good people, and we just we do the best we can with whatever we can. But I, I have always been impressed with you. I've always been impressed. You know, the one thing that we always talk about is 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 you you, you being a, a really stern coach, but a really caring coach, a guy who would take a kid aside and say to him, you know, that that that's all great. It's not all about because you know when I grew up playing football in the eighties. A lot of screamers. I mean, there's a lot of people. That was me. Just, I was a screamer. You're, you're right. But, wait, but I remember going to games and seeing you when you would pull a kid aside and, and let him know that yeah, that was right. Good job. You know, that kind of oh, thing. Yeah. And that doesn't always happen, well, especially in the heat of battle. People don't understand that, you know, <clears throat> you have to hug their necks. You can't be a successful coach without hugging the players' necks. At some point, you've got to show them you care. And the next thing is you've got to be really honest with them. And if they understand... If they understand that everything you're doing is trying to make them be better, then they got they got no problem. You know, I mean, uh, and I, I've had some. I have my critics. Believe me, I have my critics. Not everybody thinks I'm great. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, coach, we all have that. The, the other the other part of that is the coaching tree that comes from you, is is pretty amazing. Uh, you, you, you've touched so many coaches. I mean, Coach Mack is a man that I've known for a lot of years, and uh, and he, he was a guy who came up under you, and, and, and there's many others just like him. I mean, how many guys are coaching in the area that probably at some point touched your program? Oh, there's quite a few. You know, I, I've never counted them. You know, that was that was funny because that's, that's one of the things they said at this all CIF, uh, this Hall of Fame thing, they said, Mary Nancy was there, and Mary Nancy was the first guy I coached with, and they said he's got 72 guys that were part of his program that are now head or been head coaches. I've never counted. You know, I've never counted. Lewis Brewster did a story one time, and I think we're at 20-some, you know, but that, that had been head coaches. But, you know, if you go on to all the other guys, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and just in the coaching stuff is important, but I look at all the other guys that have gone into law enforcement that have gone into firefighting, that are first responders, that, that, are, that are part of the program, you know. I mean, uh, the other day we had those two police officers killed down in Palm Springs, and the guy who gives the little report on, on the TV and all that was Ray Wood, one of our offensive linemen back in the day. He's a lieutenant, captain, sorry. He's a big shot in the Riverside uh, Sheriff's Department, and those are guys I'm proud of too, you know. I mean, plus the guys have just turned out to be great fathers and great role models, uh, you know. Now, we have some failures, don't get me wrong. <laughs> you know, there are some failures out there, but, but you know, I think the success is outnumber the failures. Well, Coach, I saw you twice this past week, uh, of course, watching your son, Kurt, the head coach at Redlands East Valley, and then uh, again on last night, Friday night, as uh, your daughter, Kristen, is the athletic director at Harupa Hills. So you're still around the game of football. Did you ever have any itch, once you stepped away, did you ever have any itch, like, you know what, I probably got another season or two in me, or are you, are you enjoying retirement too much that you say, no way? Well, you know, the, the first uh, couple, three years, I was uh, Kurt's scout team coach for a couple days a week. So I'd go over to uh, Red, Redlands East Valley and just run the scout team. I couldn't be too close to the Kaiser program because that Phil was taken over and that would have... That would have been like a big blanket over him. I mean, I went to a few Kaiser games, and, and I'd be sitting in the stands, and the people would all be looking at me anytime anything was happening on the field. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm going, you know, this ain't fair to yeah. Phil and the yeah. other guys because they're really good coaches, and it really, really wasn't fair to them. So I could go to Kurt's games, and then I'd 
go up in the booth on Friday night, and he didn't really want to hear what I had to say because we're both so <laughs> different. But he had to listen to me anyway because he put the headphones on me and all that. And, and, and so, so I, I got that out of my system for a couple of years there, and then I said, you know what? You know, I still look at a lot of film on Huddle. You know, it's so different now. And in the old days, you know, we we took the film on 16 millimeters and we uh, we drove it down to Norwalk to a guy named John McIntosh, and uh, then he would develop it overnight and he'd bring it to my in-laws' house in Diamond Bar, and then we'd go pick up the film in Diamond Bar, and we could see the film, you know, by noon or something on Saturdays, and so we had to do that, and then we we went from the film, you know, and I. To pulled a couple Frank Cushes and wanted to throw that projector a couple times, but <laughs> things weren't going good. And we went from the film, and then we went real. We went to, to video, you know, and we went. Oh, it was all good going to video. And then as I was leaving, we we're going to CDs, and and yeah. and now it's the film. I mean, when the game is over, before the game is over, the film is in all those players' uh, computers. And they can go home at any time and watch the game. It's, it's unbelievable. It's, it's so it's like luxury. What are you on the sideline, like, Coach? I know. Well, yeah. And now, and now it's come. <laughs> now it's come the full in game. In game and and you know that's, you know, we, we couldn't even take still pictures. You know, one time we 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 thought we were sharp. We had a still picture camera and we were taking them, and we got called on it. And everybody said they're gonna have to forfeit games. And it turns out it's a 15-yard penalty. That it's just you know it's like it's it just was a fit. It wasn't. It wasn't anything bad, but now you can do anything you want on the sideline, you know. And I think, you know, I think, uh, I think that's good. We have, you know, if we don't use technology, if we don't, you know, technology has taken over the world. Look at here we are talking on the radio. Yeah, and yeah. we're live online we're, right we're now. Live yeah. online. We got all this stuff going on. So, uh, with all this stuff going on, it's amazing that uh, we don't take advantage of it in athletics. You know, I mean, as as I was ending my softball career, we had this program where we compared our girls to some of the other really good hitters and pitchers. And you could you could go step by step in that program. Yeah, Spotty still has it over there at, at, at Kaiser. And, and you could watch what they're doing. It was amazing, you know. And, I mean, it, you, you could be a hell of a lot better coach if you got all that stuff, you know. Plus, Plus tools to use, yeah. yeah. Our kids are all spoiled. They want that instant gratification. And so, I mean, if you could show them, I mean, Sometimes, you know, like I said, we didn't get the film back, and sometimes we didn't get it, and sometimes there's a mess, and so on and so forth. But now these kids have the whole film at their disposal when they get home from the game, and then if, that way their parents and them can all go and you complain about the coach. Well, Coach, I, 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 before we go, I want yeah. one quick question, because yeah, yeah. this is the one I've, I wanted to know the whole time. Do you like red pants? Did you ever wear red pants as a Hell no. I was just trying to figure Do out you where Kirk got any where, fashion advice. Yeah, where's, oh, no, no. Where does Kirk know, get his? Where does he get his style from? Is that is that Kathy? No, that's Lisa. That's his wife. Lisa. Lisa is a fashionista. My daughter-in-law. She knows all the fashion stuff. She's she's really good at all this fashion stuff. Uh, Kathy is really good at it too. But Kathy, Kathy's a little more conservative, and Lisa buys him the stuff. And he wears it. Yeah. Oh, he wears it. Man, I, 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 love it. I love it, man. I think it's great. I remember, the days, remember the days when he used to wear the like uh, plaid stuff? You yeah. Know? He yeah. used to wear a lot of plaid stuff in the days. You know? <laughs> hey, you know, when you're being as successful as him, I guess you can do whatever you That's want. Right. <laughs> That's right. Well, Coach, I wish we had more time, but we, we know you want to run well, home. I'm, going, take... I'm sneaking out. Yes, I am. I'm Blake, going... Blake Braun, right? Blake, your, okay, your yeah. Uh, but my grandson's playing for Montana State. You know, it's kind of a... Kind of a cool thing, and uh, they play Weber today, and uh, and you get to see him on TV. I get to see him on yeah. TV. You know, I spent three weeks up there watching every one of his games. They were three weeks at home, drove home, drove to Sac State. You know, last week in Tennessee, missed Miss Dave's call because I was at a wedding in Tennessee. <laughs> one of the ex-players' daughter was getting married, and now, now, you know, we had planned to go to Weber because it's kind of easy flying to Salt Lake, drive up there, but. Yeah. Uh, we're tired. I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> hey, Coach, but bro, next week I'll be at the Montana State for the Eastern Washington game. So. We got a little something for you real quick, but Blake Braun's marrying into what family? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. His father We didn't even go there. <laughs> we didn't want to go there. His father-in-law is John Stockton. <laughs> Can you believe that? John Stockton. Anyways, we're running out of time, but we wanted to give you a little something here, Coach. Okay. But he's still not... He's still not the... Uh, it's still not the Bruick name. Tell him down. Oh, look at this. The Bruick name. We wanted to... Uh, 
be, they ha allow you to actually enjoy your day with a cake. Every time there's a, uh, a celebration, we, you will bring a cake to it, so we brought a cake to you today. All right. Thank you guys very, very much. And keep doing what you're doing. You don't understand what a service you do to the Inland Empire. Um, People don't give you enough credit, but this has been, you guys have made, uh, I think it's made our sports in the Inland Empire much better. Well, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank we you, Coach. really appreciate that. Congratulations to Dick Bruick, uh, earning a spot in the CIF Southern Section Hall of Fame. We'll be right back here on the Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM. We focus on the customer here. Believe it or not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. We just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. push any sales on them. We do the oil change uh, and I think that's that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service. Vacuumed and cleaned your windshield for you as well. Everything's looking pretty good. You come into us one time, believe me, we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time. specific to what they need. A lot of people actually come in here for the performance training. And, and welcome back to the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM. Now we turn our attention to Cal Baptist University, and we are talking cross-country as the Lancers have had a dominant run right now in the PacWest Conference. They're gearing up for their conference meet coming up in Hawaii, which sounds like a little bit of fun, maybe mixed in with pleasure. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, joining us now, live on the show, is the head coach of the cross-country team, Ben Gall. And, and Coach Gall, let me ask you first that what do you credit to the success the men's team has had? I think it's five straight Pac West Conference titles. The women have gone back-to-back -back looking to make it three in a row. But what do you credit the success to, um, first for the men? I just think a lot of hard work, you know. Uh I mean, each year is different, and, you know, the teams are getting better. The Pac West is definitely stronger than it was in the past, and so I think our team has just been able to uh, come together and focus, uh, you know, when it comes to that time of the season and just um, and just execute, you know, our game plan, and they've been able to be successful doing that. Has your strategy changed at all from maybe when you started here at Cal Baptist to, to this point? I mean, is it based on the runners you have each season? I mean, how do you kind of go into a season with that strategy of what you want to do? Yeah, it definitely changes. I, I mean, we, our our team is different every year, and then um, then also the teams we have to compete against are different every year. You know, when I first got here, it, we um, it was a little bit easier to win this meet, and then and now it's a little bit more difficult, so we have to uh, approach it differently. And then we also look beyond this meet a lot more than we did in the past to the regional and national championships. So, and for the women's side as well, uh, really up and coming back to back conference titles. Um, what do you guys need to do to make it three in a row for the ladies? Just relax and have fun. I think you know we're. we're um, I think if we do that, we'll be fine. They've uh, they've worked really hard, and and they're just they're really prepared to do it. So it should be okay, I think. All right, we got some of your uh, your Harriers, some of your runners here uh, on the team as well. Uh, let's go right now to Valentin Robert, all the way from France. You didn't run here, obviously, because there's a big ocean between us and France. But uh, Robert, uh, Valentin Robert, let me ask you: um, Have are you a senior? Yes, I am. All right, so you've been part of these conference championship teams. Yes, two times. Two times. So when you go into a conference meet, is it any different? Is that race feel any different? Do you just prepare the same way? I think we just prepare the same way. Uh, all of us know what we have to do, and it's right in the middle of the season, almost the end of the season. So we already know exactly what we have to do, and we are ready for this, so it's okay. So when you're training over the course of a season, do you target the conference championship that you're building and, and progressing and trying to get to a point where you feel like your body's at, at its best for the conference? Yes, kind of. I mean, it's the beginning of where we have to be good. Uh, after conference, we have regionals and then nationals. So 
is we have just four more weeks of running, so that's the point of the season where we all have to be good. All right, let's talk to Anthony Lozano as well from the men's team. And Anthony, have you been around for a little bit? Do you have some conference championships under your belt as well? Uh, so I was a part of the team last year. Last but, year, okay. Uh, last year was my first year, so this is my second time. You're going to Hawaii. It's not. That's not so bad. Where was uh, it last year? Where was the last year? We hosted it at Riverside. Riverside's not, nice. Not Nothing cool is Riverside. As, not as cool as Hawaii, <laughs> but it was okay. When you go over there, though, having you know, I guess you could say the target on your back. Maybe. I mean, you are Cal Baptist Definitely. University. You're a cross country power now. I mean, do you feel like you know what? There's a there's a certain expectation when you run for CBU, and that's probably winning conference, right? Definitely with conference. Yeah. I mean, like you said, we've won it five times in a row. Um, I've only been a part of those one. Um, last year's, but hopefully again this year. I mean, we're ranked higher than every other team in our um, conference this year again. Um, teams have progressively gotten better, I think, throughout the years, but we're still extremely confident to the point where we're not really afraid of anything. We're talking to the Cal Baptist University cross-country team here on the Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM. Anthony, let me also ask you, when you get to the conference meet, it, it's is it about the team? Is it about the individual finish? I mean, is it that pack mentality? Hey, let's all finish high. Let's get those team points. Let's win the yeah. you know the team title. I mean, how do you how do you approach the Pack West meet? It's definitely a team thing. Um, usually, we have Val as our front runner, but most of it's most of our guys is what's going to make up all the points that we need to win. Um, so usually, we try to execute a plan. Definitely for this upcoming meet, we're going to all have to be in the front group. At least eight of us have to be in there. Even though five of us are only going to score, we still need as many people as we can. To at least be in that group yeah. so that we can, if anything happens, we'll all be there to score points and hopefully easily get the win. Hopefully get that t conference title again, right? Yeah. All right, let's also talk to the women's team. Uh, Katie here, Katie Daimling uh, from the CBU women's cross-country team. And, Katie, is it kind of the same way? Is it that, like, pack mentality? Let's all stay together. Let's get as many points as we can. I mean, how do you kind of approach the conference uh, race? Uh, yeah, definitely. I um, think just going together as a group and pulling each other along and just trying to make our way towards the front, um, the front top, uh, pack, and um, just seeing if we can do the best that we can, just pulling each other along. So the the conference championship race is is a week from today, uh, a week from Saturday. So when you're in Hawaii and you're running this race, I mean, does it kind of is it all about that, or is it kind of like what Coach Gall said that you know you want to even get past conference because there's there's more races beyond that. Uh, I'd say I'd agree with Coach Gall. Um, that because we're really, I mean, um, as Valentine said, like we're focused on like conference regionals, nationals now, because now it's for it's important stuff. But we, um, Coach Gall explained to us like how even though like it's conference, um, just to treat it like it's nationals and just kind of get uh, treat all the races the same and just get build on it. Raise your hand. Who's been to Hawaii? Coach and Katie. No one else has been. <laughs> So, I mean, Katie, you've been there before, but for the other ones, this will be a pretty cool experience on top of trying to win another conference title. Uh, let me ask Annette over here. And Annette's from, from uh, Hungary, and her last name is pronounced Shomogi? Yes. Shomogi. Close. Shomogi. Yes. I nailed it, right? Shomogi. Yes. Shomogi. That's what, isn't that what I said, Coach? <laughs> yeah. Um, Annette, are you excited to go to Hawaii? Yes, I'm so excited. Yeah. So, so right now in Hungary, is, is there snow? Is it cold? I mean, I just have this picture. Like, it's just it's cold place. Yes, the fall and the winter is really good in Hungary. So I'm so happy that I can practice to Hawaii and the other races in warm place. So it's really good. Plus training and going to school and living in Riverside pretty much is an awesome deal anyways, right? Yes. Southern California. Yes, I love to be here. So I'm freshman and I he came here just in August. So... I love to be here and it's a really good team. I love to work with them. We try to work uh, together in every every time, the workouts, the trainings, and we have some mental trainings. I think it's really good for the races. As well. Yeah. And then let me ask you, um, how did you find Cal Baptist University? And you know, is, is running big over there in, in Eastern Europe? I mean, because uh, you, you were telling me kind of off off camera that it's not there's not high school teams or whatever there's club teams and there's not a lot of people that run yes so in europe are club teams but actually the cbu find me not me the cbu uh so coach points find me two years ago and uh, i think it was the best choice for me to be better to become a better runner and right, i think it's working yeah obviously right you guys gonna yeah. try to win, win a conference championship and uh 
you know, get the get the sealed the deal, I guess they would say, uh, and win another Pac West title. It would be three in a row for the women if you guys were able to, to do that. Let me go back to Coach Gall over here on the Inland Sports Show. And, Coach, um, talk about the CBU invite. Did you run at the new co- uh, the course that's formerly, I guess, the golf course, you would say, here in Riverside? And where did you guys run? Yeah, we did run there. Um, we hosted two meets out there this year. And, okay. um, and also we hosted the uh, two meets and the conference championship there last year. So we've been out there quite a bit. Do you enjoy that course, and how would you kind of describe it? Uh, I think it's you know it works for us. It's a great course. I think everyone who runs there, um, which a lot of a lot of high school kids in particular, would say it's pretty dusty, and um, they're improving that. But I, I think uh, as they get that under control, it's 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 a good it's a good course. We and that's where it. you guys train as well. Uh, we we've been out there once for, to train this year as all, um, okay. so we don't train out there very much. No, you just train wherever you want. You just go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, we spend a lot of time close to close to here on the canal or uh-huh. some of the parks closer to CBU. How different is that course that you're going to see in Hawaii compared to some of the courses that you train on around here in the Riverside area? Sure. Uh, one thing, there's no dirt. It's all grass. Uh, it's going to be muddy. Uh, the you know, forecast it says it's going to be raining from now till race day in Hilo, oh, wow. which is um, quite a, you know, so yeah. Um, so about two weeks of rain going into the into the race, and uh, it's going to be it's not going to be hilly, but it's just definitely going to be sloppy and and uh, you know difficult in that way. So. Does that change your preparation? How you you know. Maybe your strategy. I don't. I don't know. I mean, maybe yeah. even the shoes you wear. I mean, does it change sure. anything? It definitely changes the shoes we wear here. We, you know, we pretty much wear flats. Uh, you know, with with no spikes. There, we'll definitely wear spikes. We bought you know some half inch spikes and longer to 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 prepare for that. And then, um, yeah, I mean, it's every course is different. You know, after that, we're going to Montana, and that's going to be completely different. Cold, flat. You know, soccer fields basically. And then we're going to Florida after that. Um, hopefully, and and that's going to be more more similar to what Hawaii is like. So we just have to prepare, you know, uh, one race at a time. So when you're in Hawaii, is is there any downtime, like maybe after the race, where you guys can, you know, go get a fresh pineapple or something, do something fun, right? Yeah, actually, I, I just talked to the men's team this morning and um, promised them that we we would have that time um, after the race, so that um, they don't get antsy and forget about why we're there before the race. And so we we will have some fun. Um, we've already scoping out some ideas, so. All right, guys. Well, best of luck. We appreciate you joining us on the Inland Sports Show. Hopefully we'll talk again after you both have conference championships again. So the men's going, men's team going for six in a row, correct? And the women's team going for three in a row. And, of course, uh, what regionals and nationals um, beyond that after the PacWest uh, meets. It's the Cal Baptist University cross-country team, men's and women's, here on the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports Radio, 1350 a.m. CBU cross country, one of the best in the nation. The women's volleyball team also, we love them here on the show. Yes, we and they're, do. And they're doing great. Just beat APU. Biggest um, crowd in Van Dyne Gym history. It was like 1,054 as they beat APU in five games. Uh, CBU volleyball back in action tonight against Point Loma. Let's talk a little more uh, high school football here on the show. Intern Angel. Are you back in the house. Yeah. Listen, I had to do it one time, Matt. I I do, does Back USC well. yeah. know that you are world famous, or they're they're starting to find out okay. slowly, day by day? They're starting to find okay. out. Is he allowed to be on Fox Sports? I don't oh, know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, jeez. Oh. Angel, Angel. Yes. Is he's the Muhammad Ali of interns? <laughs> but, but. But Mason Jandro moving up the list. Yes. As, we, as I said off the air, he is now Mr. T from Rocky Three, meaning he's the number one contender to intern Angel's crap. Mason stepped up big time. He might catch me off guard one day and hit me with a leg. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a night night, you know? Uh, welcome Gazal Hassan to the show. Yeah. Yeah. The voice of Riverside TV and UCR Baseball. Congratulate Derek Johnson, yes. Notre Dame. I know you're a Notre Dame guy. This man, 49-12 yesterday. You know, Airhead Christian put up a little bit of an effort, but man, the Titans are a good team. I, I will see them playing deep into November, December, I believe. And Derek Johnson was so great. Came up and thanked us for covering the game. I'm like, Coach, you keep winning. I, I want to be there every week. Yeah. They've got another deep run in them, I think, Notre Dame. Yeah. I mean, they beat Division One to Soro, for goodness sake. D9, they're ranked right number one at D9. We have on Riverside TV next week, we have King uh, and Roosevelt. So and I'm glad you brought that up because here's a couple scores from last night. King only lost to Norco by one. Yes. And Norco's really good. And Roosevelt beat Corona pretty handily, 56 to 37. What a job Tommy Leach has done. Yeah, great job. I think you've got a great Riverside team. Yeah, he only has one person who doesn't like him. Only one. Yeah, just one. <laughs> Real quick though, it is the 11th anniversary of the Bush Bush, and I only know that because my dear friend Paul Montgomery and his lovely wife Jennifer were married that day, a day wedding in San Diego. Oh, really? And 
Jennifer is still upset to this day because a lot of her family are USC people. They were all huddled in the bar. The wedding started at 11 a.m. But the game's on. And the Trojans are in South Bend. Everybody was at the... I'm emceeing the wedding. Everybody's at the bar watching the bush push. Jen, I apologize. I didn't mean to lay you bare like that, but happy anniversary to Paul and Jen. And the, and the last point I want to make is I was at Fall Ball yesterday over at the Plex. Yeah. Troy Person, UCR. Uh-huh. I think we'll see some good things. Yeah. Ryan Lilly threw the ball pretty well. Haas Quijada threw the ball pretty well. Wait, wait, wait. The big question is, what was Ryan Lilly's hair looking like? It's, it's cropped short. He's got the beard, though. He's got the beard growing. Okay. Well, that's something. The Bruce Suter thing going on. Nice. Uh, Mr. Miranda, Ian Nowak, three-run bomb. And get this. The son of La Sierra, Matt Hardy. We know his hitting, we know his hitting prowess, right? Yeah, he's a power hitter, yeah. On the mound. Had a great summer up in Portland throwing the baseball, and so Troy Percival got a look at him, got an extended look. I can't tell you any more than that, but fall ball looking good. Yeah, so top secret <laughs> stuff here on the show. Yeah. Insider, I love it. Because all's like, I got to run down. Here's what we're <laughs> our baseball insider. That's all I got for you, though, Pep. That's all I got for you. Pep, how about the one I wanted to talk to you about? Yeah. How about Summit Grand Terrace? So I, got to, I got to watch Grand Terrace, and uh -huh. Ryan Small is great, and obviously we know Nick Matheny already. 31-28, yeah, sure. what a game that was. What did I tell you? Zink and I talked on Friday morning. I'm like, you know what? I haven't seen Grand Terrace in person, but that Summit Grand Terrace game might be a, a game to keep an eye on. You know, on a slate of games last night, that there weren't a lot of really spectacular games. There were some really spectacular individual games that kind of brought the, the, the whole schedule up. We're running out of time, but real quick, some of the big games coming up in Week 8. I'm going to throw this one out there. San Gorgonio, 19 straight league wins. They're taking on a rim of the world. The Scots are back. Rim of the world is once again good. That's, that's going to be like a league title game right there. Citrus Hill against San Jacinto. San Jacinto's undefeated. Just throwing it out there. Any takers? No? Uh, Paloma Valley against Elsinore. Do you think Paloma Valley stubs their toe on the Tigers? Just like throw out the records. No. Just no. throw out the records. <laughs> hey, you do have the, the big one, though. The big one, and I want your take on it because you made a very bold prediction. You know, is that where you're going? That's where I'm going. That's where he's going, guys. Norton Vista, Ramona for the league championship. What about Hillcrest? No. League championship. <laughs> League championship is next week. I got one note about Norda Vista. Yeah. Eric Palestio, the running back, believe it or not, who broke the rushing record, I think, last Thursday. Yeah. I was in the quinceanera with him. <laughs> and and I, I knew the kid had a good two-step, but I didn't know he had that in him. So, shout out. Eric. Is it Melesio or is it Melicio? Melesio. They were saying, saying Melesio on Thursday. I want to point out when Jeff Gorman and I worked the game, I did pronounce it's it wrong. Melesio. It's Melesio. If anyone should know, it would be world famous. He was at a quinceanera. Quinceanera. Yeah, well, quinceanera. Just say, the guy, he ran for 11 yards last year. He is now over 2,000 yards with three games left. I didn't hear of him for five years. I he was at, the face That's the guy from the quinceanera. Yeah. <laughs> he was at 260, 263 at that's halftime. A, that's, a, that's a Kevin Hart movie. <laughs> like Angel Vistar as Kevin Hart in this movie. Where is this guy? Oh, unbelievable. Uh, so for all your scores and highlights next week, check us out on Sports Weekly Live on IEMG TV. We'll bring you all the scores um, and some of the highlights of some of these games that we just talked about. Real quick, Zink. Um, so Blake Barnett is no longer at Alabama. We've got some information. What can you share right now before we wrap up the show? you got about a minute and a half. Well, I can share that he was at the Rancho Verde football game last night with he his was. father, Lance. With Jeff Steinberg. Jeff, because that was his and coach. Steinberg laid South. down a number. What was that, 71 points on... Uh, oh, that, that might have been on the first half, too. I, it was, it, well, I... I I don't it was like 70s. Canyon Springs yeah. definitely were, was had. But um, I can say that he's going to a junior college, uh, and he is, uh, and he's moving forward with obviously his college career. That's what I would say. That's there's it. A, can you? There's a lot. No, there's a lot more coming. Okay. But for sake of not making it a big deal and all that, we're just gonna leave it at that, and we'll figure it out pretty soon. It's fine. It's enough to say he's in Southern California going to college. That's so underrated. All right. I was hoping for more, but uh, what if I say what if I said he's at Palomar? How about that? Okay, I'm a little happier. Okay, there I'm a little go. happier. Maybe he might be in my wife's class. That's true. Hey, you, you, we got to figure that one out. Palomar? My wife is an English teacher at Palomar. Didn't I see him at the quinceanera? <laughs> so the pigs are running in Norco and the quinceanera. By the way, speaking of the Norco, okay, just want to throw that Drake Girardi is leaving this week to go play professional baseball in Australia. Really? For, like, just for the, for the, for the 
winner. Hey, Good day, mate. Yeah. How's the big money you know, down under? I have no idea. I don't know. Is it, we'll, we'll find out. Yeah, when hey, Frank comes back, we'll tell him back on. Do home runs go counterclockwise down there? <laughs> very, very good. <laughs> very good. Hey, now I have a question though. Okay, best kicker in the England Empire, Kenny Norco. Agree? Oh, for sure. Best uh, Lucas Haversick. Is that his name? The best Nailed I've it. seen in years. Uh, Frank Corral numbers. Frank Corral, the, the you know, Manny, Bur Manny Burrs would like to have something to say about that. Yeah, from uh, Citrus Hill. No, he's good too. No, hey guys, guess what? So we're brought to you by Adrenaline Athletic Training. Spoiled, quick, quality oil change right here in Riverside. We love those guys. Remax Advantage. Nobody sells more real estate. Ken Sporting Goods, 40 years strong in the Inland Empire and still going. And Fandom House Studio. Go to fandomhousestudio.com. Check out their sports edits. They're the very best. Man, what a show today. It was crowded in here, but we love having all the guests. We love having our friends back. It's been awesome. We'll see you next Saturday right here on the Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM. Peace. Bye-bye. Team Darnold. <laughs> Colton, Yellow Jackets team.